G'day guys, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, getting framing and framework or stud work uh, and rafters and trusses inside of an ARCHICAD model. Now this model was sent to me by a friend of mine uh, and it was done 100% inside of ARCHICAD and basically they exported it to, to SketchUp and you can go through and you can turn things on and off according to what it is by default uh, here uh, with ARCHICAD. So, you know, if we're going to talk about framing, we're just going to really want to look at those particular items, right? So I can have my external walls on there. And what we need to do is we actually probably want to create um, some scenes so that we can just deal with this very, very quickly. So you'll notice I turned off my layers here. If I go up to uh, view animation and go add scene, you notice it created a scene up here. So if I rename that scene and I called it uh, walls and go enter, I now will see my walls. So therefore, if I can turn things on and off, I can organize the model. Go back to walls and you'll see what happens there. So it's remembering the location or what's turned on inside of the model. And the next thing we might do is we might just have the roof on there and we might turn the rest of them off here so we can quickly just do some trusses inside of that as well. So I'm going to go right click, add, and roof. All right, so basically what I have now is an organized model. Now you'll notice that I have plus spec open here. Uh, and what this will do is it'll enable me to add things to this roof. All right, so if I wanted to pitch this roof, I can simply click and you'll notice that I have several different groups here. I could click on these individually and add rafters individually. However, it's kind of really slow way of doing things. So I'll just show you what that means. Right click, roof framing, create roof framing, choose your rafter spacings uh, and everything that's required, battens, under purlins, go submit. And it created those rafters for me. But doing it one by one is really slow, and this is all about increasing your efficiency. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to go Control Z and I'm going to undo it. Now, if you're ever wondering what I'm doing and you want to have a crack at doing this, you can see what my mouse is doing there um, really quickly. Right. So what I'm going to do is first I probably needed to know the pitch of the roof, which if I drew this in ARCHICAD, I'd probably already know, but I, I did it. And I'm going to run a section through there as well. Move this back out like this, and now I should be able to. Budge tool set is where I got this from, guys. All right now, I can figure out where my level plane is and my pitch of my roof. 25 degrees is the pitch of this roof, right? Um, you would already probably know that if you had actually created this file, right? So, 25 degrees of pitch of my roof. So, therefore, I actually want to turn my roof off and turn my ceiling on. And I might just turn my roof on as well and just see if this ceiling actually lines up with uh, my roof. It doesn't because it's probably got an internal wall. So let's have a look at our walls there. And we might actually create a scene called all as well just to make this happen a little bit easier for us so we can see everything. So I'm going to go back here and go right click, add, and right click, rename, and all. And that way, when I want to know what's happening in my roof versus my walls and everything like that, I can do that. All right. Oh. All right, so now I can actually see a little bit better. Let's just get this over to the side here. Right, so instead of actually going through and manually clicking on every individual face of the roof, which seems a little bit silly, I could do several things. I could actually grab them all and I could go right click explode and they'll stick together. However, if I want to get more out of this model, I would actually just turn my roof off. Uh, roof off here. I'm going to add that as well. And I would probably look at where my pitching point is, which is your pitching point is the location where the roof is pitched from. Now, it appears as though this is pretty close. It might need to move over a touch there, maybe. Let's have a quick look. Yep. That appears to be around about right. You can go and have a good look there. And I could do several things. I could um, basically go and break inside of this here, the ceiling here, and I could push pull it. 
or I could copy the face if I wanted to. So if I said that was going to be our pitching point there, all I need to do now is push that out to there, erase this line, and if I actually select the bottom face here, which is the top of our wall, I could create a roof from there. So if I said here and uh, went in and I wrote in 25 degrees, 25 degrees and go submit, Pluspec will create a roof for me. And as you can see, we've got the old roof there and the new roof. You can see that it actually needs a little bit of altering here. Uh, roof, add gable to here. And it's going to be a, uh, okay, no, that should be great. And go submit. And we can edit all of this roof to suit ourselves. Yeah, as you can see that it's now cut off my roof there. So I could essentially go through and delete my Archicad roof if I wanted to, or I can just turn that layer off which is back inside of our roof. Right. Okay, so now I have one face, which is a parametric roof as well. It can be used and it can be sent back to Archicad if you choose. But all I did is I basically clicked on the face until I got all of my uh, faces blue there. And what I can do is I can simply right click or I can go up to my roof tool and go roof framing, create roof framing, Choose a selection, say rafter spacing, uh, crowned in rafter, or however you want to do it, your purlin spacings, under purlins. If it's a pitch roof, this is how you do it and go submit. And if we run a section through here now, or we put it in a translucent view, you'll notice that I now have all of my rafters and everything that's required to create that roof. I can go Control Z and undo that. Control Z. And what I could do is, if I wanted to use trusses, uh, I could simply go and turn my roof off again. But my roof, it created inside a plus back here, so I'm just going to turn that off there. And I'm going to turn my fascia gutting and capping off here. So that way I can actually see a little bit better what's going on there. I'm going to turn my eaves off and my roof waterproofing off. And now I'm starting to get back down to my frames. So I won't create all the trusses here, but I will create some of them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of the, my rafter tool here, and I'm actually going to go to my truss tool. Go to my truss tool, and inside of here, I'm looking at the pitch, uh, my overhang, and my upstand. Everything is inside here on the left, okay? Uh, so let's just say, um, I don't even know what the overhang is in this model. Let's say 450 uh, and 450. Could be 600, I'm not sure. Uh, spacings, uh, truncated truss, you'll see what that is in a second, and the size of our rafters. And I'm gonna go into here, and I'm going to create my trusses. And I'll just go to say here. I'll go past here, and we'll see a couple more things. So what's going to happen here is it's going to create all of these trusses for me and it happens pretty quickly. You can still see that I've actually got my valleys turned on there, which would be all quantified. Right. So as you can see, it's now created, uh, before I mentioned, if we looked at our, um, our, here we go. Setback, truss setback. That's one that's red here. This is usually your load bearing truss, so it's important to keep an eye out. In this case, it's over top of a window. You might want to edit that so that you don't have it over top of a window or increase the size of the header there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some valley trusses here, and I'm going to put them over the top here so that basically they line up with... So I'm going to have a girder truss in there. And that's going to hold up those other trusses. And you'll notice that I'm not going to need all of those, those ends in there anymore because the two roofs butt together. And this is probably something that everyone should know. Uh, and what I've done is I'm just going and selecting and turning off all the rafters that are in the way of my girder there. All right, and probably don't need that one. Or that one, turn that one back on. Right, and this is how I'm actually building my roof. So when I go through and do a section, I'm going to have my trusses in there. These are also quantified. So if I actually right click 
and go take off selection, it'll tell me how many trusses in whatever I selected. It'll also tell me how many trusses uh, are required and it'll go through all the lengths and costs and everything there if you add prices in. Close that down, it's going no. Right, so I now have my trusses and I can create this as a scene as well. So I'm going to right click add uh, and then we can see those. And we can go back to all and we can run a section through there so we can actually see what's going on. Now to do this quicker, we've actually got a tool in here which enables us to set up plans and everything like that. So I'm just gonna go in here and go all and go submit. And you'll notice across the top here, we now have our, uh, no. Right. We now have these things created. So if I went into my section here, you can see straight away that I'm having my my trusses in there, or it could have been rafters or whatever. Now I'm gonna go back to all now, and let's have a look at our walls. So before we turned our walls off before, walls only, you'll notice I now have my new roof on that was drawn. So I can actually do one or two things, I can hide it, or I can go roof off there, and you can see that I have the old Archicad roof there as well, which I'm gonna delete for now. which is not as easy to delete, but at 101 roof. 101 roof, turn it off there. And then update that. Right, and now I have that turned off. I probably could turn my ceiling off as well. Okay, and also my slab, I'm gonna update that. Because I created scenes over top, it actually um, did a few things. Now we're just going to do the framing on these external walls here for a moment. Right, so I'm going to go right click, add. And there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could simply just go and trace around these walls. So if I went to say wall, which is here, and inside of my wall has the capacity to add all of my framework and everything that's required. So I have the height of my wall, so the first thing I'm going to need to know here is how high the wall is. So dimension, 2720. You'll notice that the plate actually sits up 20 mil high, so that'll be a 2740 wall. And we're also gonna to need to know the height of the top of our windows. Right. Which might be a different height there, no. 2400 okay so we got a 2400 high ceiling is that correct let's double check that and I come out here with a line like so and I'm going to draw down vertically until I get to the bottom here 2730 is the height of that wall right okay so 2730 and the height of my windows is 2400 Okay, so let's get into drawing this here. I'm gonna to go to my walls tool here, and I'm gonna choose a lot of things that you would need to, for this type of wall. So obviously I'm gonna choose a masonry veneer because there's a masonry veneer wall drawn there. And I'm gonna choose the type of lumber I'm using. Now at the moment I'm drawing it in uh, metric, but if it was imperial, you write 14 on center, 16 on center, whatever it is, you choose two by four instead of 90, 35, whatever it is. The number of top plates you require, do you require blocking, which is nogging, uh, and what height they would like to be, and also a buffer around the windows so that your framework has enough room for the carpenters on site to install the windows. We'd also go to our type of brick, uh, and I'm gonna choose this because I actually wanna quantify the whole plan. Even though I'm just working and we're talking about framework, I'm actually going to go ahead and draw the whole thing. So. I'm going to use my right arrow button to justify my wall in line with the outside of the Archicad wall there. And once I get over the maximum length of lumber you can buy, I really need to put a joint in the wall. So I can just click individually or I can go to the end and I can split them later. So I'm just going to go around quickly and draw these walls here. And we'll put a couple of doors and windows in for you. See, I made a mistake there, I shouldn't have clicked there. If I go delete, it went back one move for me, and then I can draw straight through. And in a moment, I'll be able to show you exactly 
all of the framing that's required to frame this building. Obviously, I've got to take my windows out. To here, round to here. Now, this is so much quicker than using the beam tool inside of ARCHICAD. Okay, so there I have my walls drawn, and as I said before, I'm going to turn my walls exterior off so we can just see what happened inside of plus spec there. And if I actually went up and turned my framing on, frame, and we had a bit of a look through at a transparent view, you'll notice that I have all my framing in there automatically for me, which is really handy. I'm going to go back and turn my Archicab walls back on walls exterior there. that way when my walls exterior and I can see where I've got to do my windows so if I right click this wall and go walls add window I can type in the height of my window um, you'll notice that the header height here was set at 21 I forgot to change it change the header height to 24 and I'd also need to know the height of my window I'm going to take a bit of a guess here and say that that one is about two meters tall so height of my window is 2,000 millimeters you can write in feet and inches uh, and I can simply go through here and go window from here to here you can see I was a little bit out with my height there uh, and I'm going to enable the next one window two here to here right and if we had a look at this now, we turned our, our Archicab walls off. You can notice that it's actually started to add my framework and headers over top of my framework there. And you'll probably get a better understanding from here. So, so what we've done is we've actually created all of our trim around here, but we've also cut all of our studs as we went. And it's a really quick way to add framing into Archicad. Guys, there's some comprehensive tutorials on this. I just thought to show you quickly how to do it. I did watch a tutorial earlier and, uh, on how to add Archicad uh, framing into Archicad and I went, wow, that's gonna take so long. It wasn't feasible to do. However, now that we've actually got it inside a plus spec here, I can do a bill of quantities on everything that I've drawn, including every stud. So if I go and take a do a takeoff, inside of my takeoff, I'm actually doing a takeoff here in Plus Design Build, it's gonna figure out the length of every single stud for me. Uh, edit C more. And essentially, it now told me all the length of everything that's been drawn inside of that. So wall length, the common stud lengths, the junctions, the blocking, the top plates, the ribbon plates, and everything's required to go through and build and purchase that. It also said, in Australia, the maximum length of timber we can buy is 6.8 meters. So it also went in here and said, well, inside of that model, you have some larger than the largest length you can purchase. And when I click that, it will go through and highlight that wall for me so I know where to go and I know where I can actually um, improve on my framework. So I can go in and split my walls, I'm still selected wall here, and I can go and split it. So as if you remember here, I actually was talking about splitting walls earlier. Uh, select the wall, turn the Archicab walls off again so I'm selecting the right one. Right click, walls, split wall, and go through here and push enter. And you'll notice it had put two studs in behind there, so let's have a look. Now my walls are two, so if I actually drag this wall out like this, you can see that the wall split. But if I actually went Control Z and went right click walls select connector walls select connector walls and I move all of these walls out move out and I choose a distance that I want them to come out say we say we come out 20 meters and if I go to structure I can just look at that by itself right so you can see that now I have a split wall and these walls are created in a manner the way that we actually build them. So if I took one out, we can now create framing details from our walls. We can quantify our walls and we can do everything that's required to do it. 
if you decided that you just wanted to trace over a DWG instead of importing uh, an Archicad plan, you can just go and to Revit or Archicad and you can import an IFC. So export an IFC, import an IFC, and you can essentially go and you can add in whatever you require uh, to, to do it. So let's go back to all here. And I wanted to put a door, say, here. Didn't select the wall. Shouldn't have clicked that. Uh, add door. Wherever it's going to be. If I was working over a DWG, I still had it overlaid with my model. I could do that. It also put in the lintels over top to hold the brickwork up. So you can see that I've got a lintel there and I have a lintel over top here, which is brick hardware. And all of that can be viewed very, very quickly from inside of Plusbeck as well. Guys, as you can see, it won't take me long to fully frame detail this whole job up with trusses. Number one, I'm going to have a nicer looking Archicad model uh, with all my trusses and everything inside of it. I'm going to have all of my framework for construction so that we can check that what we're doing is buildable. The name of this uh, software is Plus Design Build uh, and you can also use another one called Plusspec and it'll enable you to go and do all of this and then go File, uh, Export, 3D Model, and you can export it as multiple different formats. However, I'd choose IFC, and I would export that IFC file, and I'd stick it straight back into Archicad. And now you have a fully detailed model, and you've done it in a quarter of the time that you could do it in the traditional methods using the beam tools. Guys, there's a whole heap more things inside of uh, Plusback here that I'm sure you'd like to see. Go to our website and check it out, and uh, we'll be interested to hear any feedback. Cheers.